Hello and welcome to the Forever Forward podcast, your destination for fresh perspectives and insights at the intersection of facility management, maintenance, and technology in the built environment. In this episode, uh, we'll talk about decarbonization in the healthcare industry, touching upon the role of operations and maintenance in driving low carbon facilities and outcomes like net zero, uh, overall helping create a more sustainable healthcare industry. Uh, now, we, before we get into the heat of the matter, I would like to ask you about some of the positive movements that you are particularly happy to see in the healthcare industry from a decarbonization point of view. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Adar. Indeed, it's, it's an interesting topic, and especially uh, from uh, when you when we look at from developed economies point of view, like countries which are developed and have been spending a lot on healthcare, and at the same point in time have taken aggressive uh, stand on their decarbonization pathway or climate goals uh, as we speak. So I think there are there are I mean I, I wouldn't call them positive movements, but let's say uh, probably some of what I've been seeing uh, right and which are obviously headed in the right direction. Now we can all one can always argue uh, about the pace of change, uh, the pace at which the work is happening, but indeed there is work happening. So one there is massive impetus uh, across the healthcare space whenever we talk about public private partnerships or pfis as it's called um, in some of the countries where uh, or where government spending is is significant directly or indirectly uh, right so i think uh, because most of the governments have taken mandate on on how much would they like their emissions to go down till what point in time would they want to get to net zero uh, healthcare becomes uh, an, an important aspect of it because that's 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 one of the contributors uh, to their own emission footprint for each of the countries. So I think that that is that is where it is very significant. And plus, the, uh, you know, and and uh, we've seen multiple uh, countries take out pathways on how they want to how they intend to decarbonize each of the sectors, and healthcare being one of them. I've seen a lot of work happening in the UK and Ireland. Purely by the virtue of the uh, work Zemplar is doing with some of its partners, and also uh, the the network that I have over there, and uh, so a lot of my, uh, you know, and in fact, I was having a conversation with someone uh, last week in uh, from Australia, and we were talking about the same on healthcare. So it seems like there is there's a strong a strong matching point when you look at between developed all the developed economies. One last point which I wanted to say is that the the healthcare has its own challenges. I mean, uh, everywhere there is there is fight for capital spending. Uh, where would you want to spend capital? And when we talk about decarbonization, because uh, not all facilities are the same. Some are old, some are very old, uh, some are new. Uh, the kind of spending that needs to happen on projects which which are part of your decarbonization strategy, when you sum that up, is a very significant quantum. Who's going to spend that, uh, and can uh, that, and and how much of it is impact that happens? Uh, on the overall spend that you do to take care of the patients and solve for other issues. So that's the competing agenda uh, when you look at it. And I think that's the biggest, uh, you know, sort of, uh, what should I say, the current scenario. So these are not, uh, let's say, the, the positive movement, but I've just summed up what decarbonization uh, means for the healthcare industry uh, and for everyone involved at this point in time. I know you've developed a strong opinion over the years. Uh, working in this field, working with FM companies in this area. So, what is your view of the role of operations and maintenance in enabling the decarbonization strategy for healthcare? Um, I mean, who has the major role to play here? Is it the asset owners? Is it the FM companies? Who is it? So, I think I'll probably answer, take the second part of the question first. I mean, without a shadow of a doubt, the asset owners are uh, are definitely. Uh, you know the ones who would drive the strategy because they get directly impacted by the execution or the lack of execution of the same. However, having said that, I think FM companies uh, are a very important stakeholder wherever they are managing engineering and health services. They are they are an extremely uh, important uh, stakeholder uh, in 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 my uh, sense. And I think they have been. I don't think they've been playing a very active role. They've been playing a dominant role. Uh, so far, and there is a lot of active role that they can play. They can be an active participant contributor to the decarbonization strategy, ensure that it happens in a way that's most efficient, faster, better, and cost effective. And I, I, I mean, there, there have been a, a few FM companies in the UK and Ireland who've been who've been uh, who've started to do it. Uh, they're a long way off, uh, right? Uh, not just the one that we work with, but uh, uh, the others as well, right? So, which is heartening. So that's one thing that you see 
the conscious effort uh, being made by FM companies to uh, make their 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 end customers realize that they are taking their decarbonization strategy as seriously as as they would like to to take. Why is that uh, important? Yeah. It's purely from the point of view that they can bring in a lot of capital and expertise. So a lot of public-private partnerships happen where public-private companies bring in the money. Now, decarbonization wasn't a part of the agenda when, when, let's say, 10 years back or 15 years back when those contracts would have happened. But today it is, and there are going to be capital expenditures required. And I think these companies can can bring in money, and some of the larger ones, which have uh, decent more chips uh, for access to financial uh, finances, uh, right, particularly. And not only that, they, it allows them to expand their uh, services business as well. They do projects, they, they maintain so on and so forth. So I think that's that's where I would say their role comes in. And then connecting the dots between uh, operations and maintenance in FM companies, because at the end of the day, the operations and maintenance of the assets has a very direct link to the energy consumption, direct link to emissions. So they are definitely responsible for it. The compounding effect of uh, any in, any good or bad decision an FM company takes on ONM is significant. It may not look significant uh, when you look at on a per month or a per year basis, but really compounded over a 10 year, 20 year period when uh, the typical length of the P, uh, you know public private partnership or PFI projects, that's, that, that is absolutely uh, significant. So I think the role of operations and maintenance, not just in healthcare, is known. We've spoken about it. There are some contrarian views that we, we've held, but at the end of the day, that is important. Uh, that can that that is the number one thing which can play a significant role in helping, you know, cut down the kind of capital spend that might be needed for decarbonization. So 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 that's there, and I think uh, that's a that's where the role of FM and ONM companies become extremely important uh, when you look at decarbonization as a whole, particularly for healthcare because it. As I, as I mentioned, to, to whatever I understand and read from what's available, there is a constant fight on where, how do you deploy that capital that is needed uh, for uh, meeting your goals. So, yeah. Is there is there a certain framework that you have seen uh, that is working well right now in your experience of working with the FM companies and OEM teams so far that probably other uh, companies could also use? So I think whatever I'm seeing in the UK and I mean, uh, uh, I mean, again, by courtesy of the work that we've been doing in that space and also following some of the companies which have particularly been impressed, unfortunately can't take names, but I think there are two to three FM companies in the UK uh, who are really doing well in the healthcare space and they're up in the game, which is significant. So there are two starts that we are seeing is that people are okay, right, willing to deploy technology uh, to improve their operations and maintenance standards, which not only helps them cut their own costs, so on and so forth, but has a direct impact on decarbonization, and they've been doing that. So they are upping their game on the digital front, which is su supremely important, uh, which we have spoken about in the past. And the other is they're also finding opportunities where there are projects which are part of the decarbonization strategy for the uh, for the uh, for the end asset owner, but they are bringing in their capital and saying, okay, let us run this end to end for you, uh, right? And and uh, I think these are again aligned. These are the frameworks. There's no framework as such, but so the idea is for an FM company and the leadership to realize that wherever they see an opportunity uh, that out of all these strategies that someone is wanting to execute, the asset owner is wanting to execute, and they can find out uh, four or five top uh, ways in which they can contribute. They should just not wait, but be very proactive in doing so. It not only helps them, uh, you know, sort of uh, do well in the existing contract, but opens up inorganic growth opportunities very significantly uh, in that sense. And that's the playbook. I mean, I, I don't have a framework uh, very different to what we've already spoken about. I think it's not just true for healthcare. I think for any space, FM company should be far more proactive than what they have been in the past. So I guess, but yes, healthcare has a has a greater opportunity for them without a shadow of a shout, doubt. I mean, you would have some other uh, sectors which would have a greater uh, opportunity, defense being one, although we haven't worked in defense, but I guess uh, that's that's another space which is up for grabs. We know that uh, the end goals of decarbonization and for whether they call it net zero or low carbon or decarbonized buildings, uh, if that remains the same, uh, does the process of operations and maintenance evolve further to enable it? And uh, we can't keep technology out of the conversation. So what do you think technology has? Uh, what's the role of technology here? 
No, I think it doesn't change because, you know, inherently we've spoken about the transformation that's happening. Uh, so decarbonization, uh, for some, the, the, the nudge to change the way they're doing operations and maintenance could be reliability. For some, the nudge could be decarbonization. For some, the nudge could be cost. And for some, the nudge could be combination of all of it. Or the weightage could be different, right? But I guess that doesn't change uh, uh, what remains. And again, uh, um, this is this is my opinion. And I mean, what remains constant is the fact that ONM must change. The way people are doing ONM must change. And and there is enough evidence now that most FM leaders have realized. I mean, I, I think people will uh, will not say it out aloud, but I guess we we've, we've started seeing enough signals from leaders on their post on LinkedIn, the sentiment of the post on LinkedIn, from the conversations we've been having. Uh, I think there is people have realized that, that this cannot continue for long. Like the status quo uh, is not going to be maintained for long. So uh, I think technology is important. We, we, we should not forget, we've already sp only spoken about it. Uh, what's not going to change in the state of ONM, you would still need people, uh, this, right? So what's, so that's a constant and you should, everyone should work towards it. But what's going to change? There is going to be two displacement that will happen. One is at the skill level, the kind of skills that are deployed at the at the base of, of the solution versus the top of the solution of how you're doing operations and maintenance, and that shift causing a cost shift. So, I think long story short, tech the role of tech remains the same is to make sure that people are supported in the manner they should be to be able to uh, you know. Uh, do the job that they're expected to do in in a changing environment, in a data first or an AI first environment, and it wouldn't change because of decarbonization. Decarbonization happens to be an end outcome where ONM can contribute to, along with some of the other aspects, and that's how it should be uh, taken. I, I don't think it changes for healthcare or it changes for any other uh, sector as such. Right, right. Uh, uh, on this note, uh, wrap up the questions for this episode, but uh, very deep insights. And I see that there's a common link between the operations and maintenance process, whether it is healthcare industry or any other industry that like you pointed out. I mean, um, uh, I don't think that there, there could be some I know the challenges. The challenges are different for different and the priorities could be different. And again, the, 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 there could be minor tweaks in the processes, right? Yeah. Something is more important in one sector versus the other. But largely, you would say that the skeleton of what you do in ONM remains the same. That doesn't change uh, as you move from one sector to the other. True. Right. So uh, yeah. thanks for uh, being here for this episode. Thanks for your time. Um, I hope uh, all the listeners are uh, enjoying uh, the content we're making. Um, and hope it helps them take a further step in their journey. Well, absolutely. And thanks for, for having me. And hopefully this was as much as a bite-sized episode that we wanted uh, to have. So we'll probably not elongate it further. Thanks, Sid. Appreciate it. Looking forward to the next one. Thank you so much. Bye.